How to spend 5 days in Oahu, Hawaii This guide offers 5-day itinerary for Oahu that includes the best beaches, hikes, and water sports. It also provides tips on where to stay and how to visit Oahu on a budget. Explore cultural and historic sites, try delicious food, and have unique experiences with this comprehensive guide to Oahu. We have compiled a list of the top activities for first-timers to enjoy during a five-day stay in Oahu, the most popular island in Hawaii. Don't miss out any of the fun and exciting things to see and do. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for future videos. Day 1. Honolulu Sightseeing If you're visiting Hawaii and going through Honolulu's International Airport, it's a good idea to start your 5-day trip on Oahu in the city. Honolulu and the Waikiki neighborhood have lots of hotels, shopping and entertainment options, but the beaches can get crowded. To avoid the crowds, make sure you explore beyond the touristy areas. There are great hikes, museums, and attractions in and around Honolulu, and we've listed some of the best below. Pearl Harbor If you're visiting Oahu for the first time, make sure to visit the Pearl Harbor National Memorial, which includes the USS Arizona Memorial and the Pearl Harbor Visitor Center. Admission to both sites is free, but you will need to reserve a time ticket for the memorial online and pay a nominal convenience fee. Diamond Head State Monument The Diamond Head Summit Trail is a 1.6-mile round-trip hike located on a volcanic crater in Oahu, and it's very popular. The path includes stairs and uphill climb, with a total elevation gain of 560 feet. At the top, you can see the Honolulu skyline and Waikiki Beach on one side and a lighthouse on the other, with a beautiful shoreline in between. There are picnic areas, restrooms, and concessions available at Diamond Head State Monument. There is a small entrance fee that applies per car or person, and visitors from out of state are required to make reservations beforehand. Waikiki Beach Waikiki Beach in Hawaii is famous for its palm trees, golden sand, and colorful sunsets. However, it is also the most crowded beach on the island. It is recommended to visit this beach during sunset for its west-facing views. But for more relaxing beach experience, consider visiting other beaches on the island. Waikiki Beach is perfect for those who love a vibrant atmosphere as there are various activities such as live music, volleyball matches, and surf lessons available on the beach. Alamona Center The Alamona Center in Honolulu is known as the world's largest open-air mall. Despite being located near beaches, the atmosphere is sophisticated and offers a variety of high-end stores, clothing chains, and department stores. Moreover, shoppers can explore multiple dining options on all four floors, including a large food court serving international cuisine and the Shirukiya Japan Village Walk with traditional dishes. Day 2 and 3 Southeast End Hiking and Beach Hopping The southeast area of Oahu is considered to be among the most attractive regions. It features coastal hikes and immaculate beaches that are less busy compared to Waikiki. This area has small towns and limited hotels, which contribute to maintaining a more family-oriented and community-like atmosphere. To fully explore the beaches and trails along the coast, we suggest spending two days. Below are some of them. You can easily drive from Honolulu to this part of the island. You can go east from Diamond Head and follow the coastline or go up the Pali Highway for mountain and forest views. You can also make a loop to experience everything. Hanauma Bay Nature Preserve Hanauma Bay, situated on the eastern shore of Oahu, is a famous snorkeling destination on the island. You can see brilliantly colored fish and coral thriving in the waters. The bay is situated inside a volcanic crater and has been under conservation for over 50 years. To give marine life some rest from human interference, the bay is closed on Mondays and Tuesdays. Visitors are expected to watch an instructional video prior to visiting the beach. 
you can take a shuttle service from Waikiki to reach here. However, if you choose to drive, make sure to arrive early to find a parking lot as it could be difficult. The preserve opens at 6.45 a.m. and there are various fees including entrance, parking, lockers and snorkel gear. You have an option to bring your own snorkel gear. Coco Crater Trail The Coco Crater Trail is a challenging hike that spans less than a mile but includes over 1,000 steps. It leads up a ridge and provides panoramic views of the eastern end of Uhau, including Hanauma Bay, originally built as a railway to supply bunkers during World War II. The trail now includes wooden rungs to assist hikers. If you make it to the top, you'll be able to see miles of coastlines in several directions. Lanikai Beach Lanikai Beach is a beautiful and peaceful beach that has soft light-colored sand and a view of the Mokalua Islands, which are two small islands nearby that are home to many seabirds. To get to the beach, you need to go through some narrow alleys behind a residential area as it's not very easy to tell from the main road. However, since there is no specific parking lot, the streets tend to fill up with cars of people going to the beach, making it difficult to find a place to park. Please note that there are no facilities or washroom available at this location. Therefore, it is important to bring all the necessary items with you for a day at the beach. If you want to explore the nearby island, consider renting a kayak from the vendors in Kailua Town. Latikai Pillbox Hike you can take a short hike uphill that provides breathtaking views of Lanikai Beach and the Mukalua Island. The hike leads to a pair of old military bunkers and it's fairly easy in dry conditions, covering only a couple of miles up and back. However, it's essential to wear proper footwear as you'll be walking on a dirt path. The trail's entrance is somewhat hidden in a neighborhood that has limited parking, but the hike is quite popular so it's best to come early to avoid crowds. Kanyohe Bay Kanyohe Bay is a large area with multiple beaches and plenty of opportunities for boating and water sports. Visitors can use catamarans, kayaks, and paddle boards to explore the Kanyohe Sandbar and Mokoli, a small island that looks like a straw hat. The base barrier reef helps to create an abundance of coral for snorkeling. Kualua Regional Park is another option for those looking for a sandy beach and easy access to Makoli. Day 4 North Shore Road Trip If you're looking for a peaceful escape from the business city of Honolulu, head to the North Shore for some secluded beaches and charming small towns with a vintage feel. Take your time exploring the area as there are plenty of beautiful farms and mountains to see along the way. To make the most of your trip, we suggest starting early and driving through the center of the island on H2 Highway, then making a loop down the north end of the Windward Coast. You can end your day by trying some delicious shrimp from one of the many roadside restaurants. Dole Plantation The Dole Plantation is a great place to stop for a delicious snack while traveling from Honolulu to the North Shore. If you're interested in pineapple theme activities, you can explore a garden maze or take a train ride through the fields. However, you can also head straight to the cafe and enjoy a dole whip without judgment. Keep in mind that the cafe doesn't open until mid-morning, so if you want to make the most of your time on the North Shore, you may need to come back another day instead of stopping here on this trip. Kaina Point State Park To begin your adventure at Kaina Point, Follow the northern coast westward until you reach the end of the highway. The state park may be a bit rough as there are no amenities provided, but it also means that there are vast stretches of empty beachfront and hiking trails. The Kaina Point Trail stretch 3.5 miles to the remote westernmost tip of Oahu, and the only way to get there is to walk. Halewa Town if you follow the coast towards the Kamechameha Highway, you will reach the charming town of Halewa, where you can stop to have a brunch or lunch. This historic village has a modern shopping and dining plaza, along with many food trucks. Great for satisfying your taco cravings, surf shops, small art galleries and locally owned boutiques. Waimea Valley If you want a break from the beach, 
you should check out the botanical gardens in Waimea Valley. Although there is an entrance fee, the gardens offers a nice hiking trail and a small waterfall where you can swim. Additionally, you can enjoy the native flora of Oahu while visiting this location. Day 5 Windward Coast Culture and Adventure before leaving Oahu, you can enjoy some exciting island adventures at a large nature retreat and experience Polynesian culture and cuisine. Keep in mind that these activities are more geared toward tourists compared to the previous day's activities. If you prefer not to participate in these popular attractions, you can choose to go for one more hike, spend another day on the North Shore, have some beach time or anything else that you missed earlier. Biodo Inn Temple If you're driving yourself to today's activities, you can stop by at Biodo Inn to explore its tranquil environment. The temple is a replica of the Buddhist temples in Uji, Japan, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and is located nearby and is over 1,000 years old. Kualua Ranch If you're looking for adventure activities like Jeep and ATV rides, horseback riding, and zip lining. head over to Kualua Ranch on the Windward Coast. This location has been used in many TV shows and movies, including Godzilla and Jurassic Park, and you can take a behind-the-scene tour to visit familiar spots. Additionally, the ranch is situated next to Kanyohe Bay and offers activities like kayaking and boat excursions. So if you're not renting a car, you can arrange for shuttle service when you purchase your tickets. Polynesian Cultural Center At the Polynesian Cultural Center, you can experience both education and entertainment together. The center represents six island nations with various activities like song, dance, games, and demonstrations at many villages. You can also learn traditional skills such as spear throwing and fishing. Take hula lessons and try local specialties at different zones dedicated to Hawaii, Tahiti, Tonga, Samoa, Aotearoa, and Fiji. To complete the experience, luau's and an evening show are available. Combo tickets that include admission, dinner, and the performance are also offered, as well as shuttle service from Waikiki. When is the best time to visit Oahu? Oahu is the most popular tourist destination among the Hawaiian Islands, attracting visitors year-round. However, it can get very busy during summer, winter break, and spring school holidays. Choosing to visit during the fall season before the onset of winter rains or some weeks in spring, excluding spring break, can result in a quieter experience with fewer crowds. Where to stay on Oahu? Oahu's weather is a great year-round, but some factors may influence when to plan your visit. For example, if you prefer fewer crowds, consider going during the shoulder seasons. If you want to catch specific surf conditions or go whale watching, plan accordingly. May, August, and December, June are generally peak seasons. This five-day itinerary for Oahu is detailed and jam-packed with fun activities. You'll have a great time in Hawaii and make lots of fun memories. There are so many fun things to do in Oahu. Which day and activity on this Oahu itinerary do you find the most enjoyable? And which activity would you not want to miss? Let me know in the comments. We hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.